So now you're telling me that it has been approved in Japan, the ability to mix animal and human DNA, therefore splicing it and creating animal-human hybrids that are allowed to come to term. Now I'm gonna let you marinate that for just a second. Are you good? Are we ready to cook this chicken? Now, the reason behind it is it is supposed to potentially help with human organ donors and transplants. Therefore, if you needed a heart, a liver, a lung, a kidney, you would have access to that quicker because if you know anything about that, it is a very lengthy process and a very challenging one for those who need organs. But there are some huge red flags and a lot of skepticism attached to it because they're not entirely sure what the human cells will potentially do to the animal brain. And then there's also the whole thing of religion. I swear every day I wake up, I'm like, what sci-fi movie did I just get a starring role on? What timeline did we just jump on? What universe are we currently residing in? So what do you think? Is this a good idea? Is this a bad idea? Let me know, put it in the comments. And obviously this is for information, education, and entertainment purposes only, but we need to talk about this. He said the thing. <laughs> All right, here we go. I think we do need to talk about this. This is very interesting, a very cutting edge technology. I don't think he puts it quite into a proper context there. And if you read the comments, I think there's a lot of misconceptions about what a quote unquote animal human hybrid means. First of all, the research he's talking about that was improved, this is, goes back to 2019 actually, is not about hybrids so much as chimeras. So the technical difference there. A hybrid is when you combine two individuals, two species, two, two breeds or two whatever. And it's basically the mixing of the DNA. Whereas here they're talking about chimeras, which are mixing of the cells. Essentially the technology is to take human stem cells and implant them into an animal embryo. Now the reason, and this was actually, this technology in Japan was approved in 2001. But in 2001, the approval had two in interesting restrictions. One was you could not let the embryo develop beyond day 14. Uh, and you also could not implant it in a uterus, right? So it would have to be killed at, after 14 days and you could never implant it and let it come to term. And you couldn't do brain cells. You could do other organs, other tissues, but no brain cells. In 2019, so now this is 18 years of research later, um, the, it was decided in Japan that, well, we've researched this enough so that we can progress to the next stage. So we're going to allow embryos to be developed beyond a, a day 14. They can be implanted and you can do brain cells. So they limited, they, they lifted those restrictions. And again, this was after almost two decades of research where we do have a pretty good idea what's going to happen and what's not going to happen, right? So one of the concerns in 2001 was that, well, if we're putting human brain cells in a mouse, will the mouse brain be different or will it just be a mouse brain with human neurons? And it turns out it's just going to be a mouse brain with human neurons, right? It's not going to develop into a human brain in a mouse. So that was one concern that was dealt with. Um, and then they also said, yeah, we were getting good at, to a good enough place with this technology that there's probably not going to be any surprises. So we could take the next cautious step and take it one step further. Uh, so this isn't coming out of nowhere. This isn't like we have no idea what's going to happen. This is based upon decades of research, and this is just a lifting of restrictions based upon the results that we have so far. Now, why is there so much interest in these, this type of research and doing either hybrid or chimeric research? These are human, non-human chimera, specifically uh, what you would call this. And he does mention one reason, because this, will, this is part of a program to develop animals that can produce organs for human transplant. Now, some of this is about splicing human genes into animals. The reason for that is you want to give them basically a human immune system. You don't want the human recipient to reject the animal donated organ because it's not human, right? An allo allogenic rejection, right? You don't want it to be yeah, rejected as an allograft. So if, if um, however, it wasn't a non-human tissue was human tissue, and also you could you could essentially make it so that the immune system does not trigger an immune response, right? The proteins that are on the donated organ would be neutral to the immune system, so essentially. So it wouldn't provoke rejection, 
We, right, that's the ultimate goal is to have organs that won't be rejected by the recipient. Also, it's really nice to grow organs because most people who need organ tr transplants don't get them. Sure, there are, you know, there are, you can do live donor, you could do cadaveric donors, but there isn't enough to go around. That, you know, we, we have to decide who has priority, who gets these organs. So there is a massive unmet need for organs. And so being able to, to grow organs in animals could meet that, that need. And in fact, these could be superior if they're genetically engineered so that they do not provoke rejection. So now, instead of having to spend the rest of your life on anti-rejection drugs and all of the risks that, that entails, you wouldn't have to do that. So this could be a massive, massive medical uh, advance. But the, there's another reason to do it as well. And that is to create animal models of disease. How are we going to study, for example, Alzheimer's disease in mice? We can't really do that unless we are looking at human neurons, right? Human cells. So we could, right now, we could do that in a couple of ways. We can just look at, you know, you could grow human neurons in a petri dish, right? You could grow them. Um, and now you're just looking at a culture of cells. But if we want to look at how those cells are interacting with each other and networking and, and how they're living in a more of a biological environment, we can create what's called organoids, right? It's like a brain organoid. It's not a brain, but it's a clump of neurons that has some basic preliminary brain-like architecture to it. Not enough to be a functional brain, but enough that we could study brain diseases. We're looking at not just a culture of neurons, but now an organoid, they call it, of neurons, which gets us one step closer. But if we could look at a fully functioning brain in a, in a living animal, and then that brain has human neurons, again, it's still a mouse, it's still a mouse brain with mouse intelligence, but now we have human brain cells, that gives us another step towards being able to study uh, you know, human neurological diseases like Alzheimer's disease. So there's a massive beneficial implications for biological research, uh, and there's massive implications for human organ transplants. Uh, this research is worth doing. It should be supported. We have been, I mean, collectively, you know, been progressing in very careful, small baby steps. Uh, this is not just opening the floodgates gates to the island of Dr. Moreau, right? People have mentioned this is all sweet tooth. No, we're not talking about people with animal characteristics or animals with human intelligence. Nothing like that's happening. This is not creatures that will be like half human and half animal. They're animals that have been biologically or, or uh, changed, either genetically or cellularly, to have human characteristics that we can use for organ transplant or for research. That's it. Um, the ethics of this are being explored, have been explored. You could find articles online where it's deeply explored. Like, is this research ethical? The general conclusion is, yeah, yeah, it's ethical. It meets all the standards for biomedical ethics, uh, as long as it's being done in the careful way that it, that it is. So, no, this is not bizarre world, science fiction world, you know, where you have to get worried that scientists, mad scientists are doing crazy stuff, you know, with animal-human hybrids. None of that science fiction, st fiction stuff is going on. This is just cutting edge medical technology that we all want. Uh, this, is, this is definitely worth doing and is being done in an ethical and careful way.